Listen, God wants you well more than you want to be well. He wants you to prosper and be in health, come on, even as your soul prospers. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will get sicker. Is that what it said? We're gonna lay hands on the sick and what? They will recover, recover. praise God. This is the power of the Word of God. Healings are going to start to happen and manifest. They're happening today at Healing School. Are you expecting? Is anybody expecting? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Healing School. You guys want to get up on your feet and ready to worship? The director of Healing School, Daniel Amstutz, is on vacation, well-deserved, yes, amen. And so I am his daughter, Katrina Amstutz Washburn, and so I'm filling in for him today. You guys doing good? Did you come expecting? I hope so. Tracy Bartlett is in the house, amen. Those of you who are joining online, thank you so much for being here today. As my dad would say, if you're there alone, go next door and grab somebody and bring them over. And you guys can have a healing party, right? Amen. All right, let's get going. Never be on my lips, never be on my lips. 
the same God that never fails you're not failing now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name good we might not be sometimes right how many of you are always good oh come on some of you that are raising your hands you, we're gonna have to pray for you <laughs> in the midst of the storm he is always good say he is always good the greatest thing is even not in the midst of the storm he is always good amen
Everything else can wait I've come to seek your faith So everything else can wait I'm here for you I want to just be here at your feet just be here on my knee because of your presence i am complete jesus Everything else can wait I've come to seek your faith so Everything else can wait I'm here for you I want to just be
kind of in that moment where you're just kind of stuck none of you in life you're just kind of stuck come on how many of you are kind of in that spot in life I am how many of you in that life where you're just kind of stuck it doesn't mean you're enabled or that you're not trusting God or that you're not walking in faith at all but sometimes you get stuck and you don't know where you're supposed to go right and all you can do is just breathe Amen. Listen, y'all, I'm going through a tough time, and sometimes I feel like I can't even breathe. But the thing that's amazing is I know that God is there no matter what, and He is faithful, and He will never forsake me. Amen. So those of you who are watching online, I know that there is a lot of people right now, and even people who are going to come back and watch this in archives, you've hit a low point. But God is there to meet you at that low point and raise you up to where he is. Amen? All right. Stand up, shake some hands, hug some people, greet some people, and we're going to go to a video. Thank you guys for worshiping with us. When you are walking in the Lord, when the Lord is your life, then out of this place of storms and battles and, and, and uh, persecutions, and trial, 
You know what? Instead of getting weaker, God's plan for you is that you're going to do what? You're going to get stronger. Now, how many know that if trials made us strong, we would all be really strong? It, well, the trial didn't make me strong. It was depending upon the word in the trial that made me strong. We can either grow in grace and grow in strength through the stuff we're going through, or we can fall apart like a $2 suitcase. God's will for us is not to fall away, but God's will for us is to grow stronger, and God's will for us is to endure. Having patience, we're going to obtain that promise. How long is it going to take for you to get your healing? I don't know. You know what? It might be instant. It might take a day. It might take an hour. It might take a week. What if it takes five years? Are you willing to endure? Believing God's word. How long is it going to take? I don't know. But what I do know is God's faithful. Good afternoon, Healing School family. How are you doing this afternoon? How many of you agree with what Daniel said? You agree with that? He said, I don't know how long it'll take. It might be instant. It might be, you know, a while before you get your healing. But you know what? One thing we do know is that God is faithful. Do you agree? Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us here at Karis Bible College in beautiful Woodland Park, Colorado. And we meet here most weeks between the hours of 1 and 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We thank you for all of those that have gathered here on campus with us this afternoon. We thank you that you've come. We say welcome to you, online family. I always have to say hello to you and welcome, because you know what? We have people joining us from all over the world. They are watching. They watch us faithfully each week. And also sometimes, because I've got friends in Kansas and South Africa and Australia, and they'll email me or text me and say, Tracy, I was watching. So I'm saying hello to all of my friends, to Edra that's in Texas, to Marguerite and to um, Nicole. We say hello in Florida. Thank you so much for joining us. And we know that you join us on Facebook. We notice you join us on the archives and Gospel Truth TV. Let me ask you a question. Is this your, who has never heard of Gospel Truth TV? Oh, really? You haven't heard of it? Well, sister, let me tell you. You want to tune in to Gospel Truth TV. It's gospeltruth.tv. It's on the internet. It's 24-7 of Andrew and his friends. You get to see Karis worship. Did you enjoy that worship today? Led by Katrina? That was awesome. Well, I'm telling you, you get that. You get teaching Andrew and his friends 24 hours a day. So if you don't want to listen to the CNN and all of that other stuff, what is it? too good to be whatever that little wrong news is. You don't want to listen to that. What you want to do, if you're in the house, a lot of times what I do is I just turn it on and have it playing and all day long. You get Andrew, you get Kenneth Copeland, you get Jesse Duplantis, you get Keith Moore, you get Greg Fritz, Creflo Dollar, and of course you get us here at Healing School, so you don't want to miss it. It's a good way to stay filled up with the Word of God. Now, this afternoon, what we're going to be doing at the end of the service, we're going to have some prayer ministers. They are so anointed. I mean, you will even see them as they stand up front. You might see the glow flowing. I was joking with them with that at the meeting today. But you know what? They are here to agree with you in prayer. Because sometimes what we need, we just need someone to stand with us in agreement. But you know what, online family? We have not forgotten about you. Well, I want you to call our communication services department. The number is 719-635-1111. We have some anointed prayer ministers that are waiting. They are waiting there by the phone to pray with you and agree with you. Now, you know, we've got a lot of things happening here at Karis. We always do. 
But this Saturday, we are having something that is called Karis Day. Now, the only, it's going to be live stream, but the only way that you can get in on the live stream, you have to go to one of the locations that we have. And really, this is more so for those that are watching online. Because if you go to karisbiblecollege.org, you're going to see a lot of locations. We have over 64 locations all across the world. And if you find a location that is near you, I want you to go to that location this Saturday, and it's gonna be between the hours of 9.30 and 12 o'clock. Andrew is going to be teaching. So he'll be here teaching live, but you can view it with all of the Karis family that we have all across the world. Another thing we're gonna be doing is August 2nd, and the third, if you have a young person, a teenager, I see some in the audience, you definitely want to bring them to the Kingdom Youth Conference. I think I'm going to try and sneak in because I look like a youth, right? I'm only like, well, I look about 18, right? My sister, there you go. <laughs> so you don't want to miss that because there's going to be some amazing speakers here. We're going to have Todd White, if anybody knows about Todd White. Andrew Walmack is going to be teaching. Uh, Joseph Z. And also Ryan Edberg, they're going to be here and they're going to be teaching our youth because we've got some young people that are on fire for God. Because you know what? There's no little Jesus that's in them. It's the same Jesus that's in us that these, these young people, they're going to take the kingdom by storm. And yes, we've got some millennials, but we've got some young people that do know the truth of God's word. And they're coming here next week to praise God. Amen. After that conference, we're gonna have Healing is Here. Has anybody come to a Healing is Here conference? Okay, let me tell you something. Healing is Here is healing school on steroids, okay? So if you think we're gonna be power pack here this afternoon, cause my sister Tracy, she's got a power pack word for you. She is ready. She told me a couple of months ago that God gave her the word. So she is ready. So if you've not been to Healing is Here conference, you need to come. It's a free conference. It's going to be from August the 13th through the 16th. We've got Power Pack speakers. Andrew Walmack is going to be teaching. Greg Moore is going to be teaching. He probably will also be sharing from his new book, How to Flow in the Supernatural. Audrey Mack, if you are not here, Audrey Mack, she is Power Pack. She's from France. She lives in Florida now. The last time she clowned up on the pulpit. So we don't know what she's going to do this year. But she, she was power packed. And we end the conference with Todd White. So he will be with us two different times and it's going to be amazing. We are looking to have this auditorium filled with God's people that are seeking to know what it means to teach somebody how to receive their healing, how you can minister to other people. We will have a lot of people that need to be receiving their healing as well. So we are excited. My team is very, very excited. This is our conference, Healing is Here, and we're always excited about that conference. So what I'm gonna do right now is do some giveaways. We love to give here at Healing School. So I need to see all of my first time guests. This is your first time on campus for Healing School. Oh, that's awesome, oh my gosh. Hey, I just met them, how you doing? She's going to come to worship art school, right? Okay. I won't put you on the spot. Okay. <laughs> I got to put my plug in there for Karis Bible College. Okay. We love to give things away. So what I'm going to give away today, the first thing I'm going to give away, you know, when they were singing in, in Katrina at the end of that song, she just kept talking about, I love you, God. I love you. I love you so much. So many times I know that it's a simple thing, but a lot of people don't know that they are loved by God. And if you don't know that you're loved by God, you can't give away something that you don't even know that you have. So how are you going to love someone if you don't even know that God loves you? Well, Andrew has this DVD and it's called As I Have Loved You. And it's talking about that, that you got to know who you are. And if you know how loved you are by God, you can bless someone else and just show the love of God to them. Amen. My brother Roddy is going to First time guest, whoever's excited, that's how we do it here. We love cheering, because you know what? You're not even excited, you're not even, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. See, because it's not about getting excited about, okay, I'm getting a free present. I do love presents, but it's not about that. It's about being excited about getting somebody else with it. How many of you ever heard of um, 
Pastor Dwayne Sheriff. Did you know that something was stolen from you? Sometimes we think that things are stolen from us and we don't really know who we are in Christ and that the enemy tries to get us to think we, not, we are not who God says we are. We are the righteousness of God. We are blessed and highly favored. We're a party going somewhere to happen. But you know what? Some people don't know that. They don't know that. When people ask me, how are you doing? I'm blessed, healthy, and excited. I'm the righteousness of God. Anointing flows in me. Because I am who God says that I am. It's not about anything else, but it's about who God says that you are. Pastor Dwayne, he wrote this book. It's called Identity Theft. And the enemy tries to steal your identity. But how you know your identity is how you know what the word of God says about you. Amen. Henry's going to give that to one of our first time guests. And the last thing I want to give away to you today, uh, Tracy's going to talk about that. This is something that she created, and it was so powerful. I'll let, I'll let her tell the story of it because she wants to show it off. But we are giving this away. It's a little book, and it's, all it is, is is a little flip book, and it's called Releasing the Spirit of Faith. And it's got some power-packed scriptures because sometimes we don't know, okay, God, what scripture can I stand on? Well, you know what? Tracy did all the work for you. And she found all these power packed scriptures like, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Your mercy, O Lord, endure forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. So she's got a lot of power-packed scriptures in here just for you as you're walking through something. You're walking through a healing. You're walking through a situation in your life. And, and, uh, Rod, come on, Roddy. Roddy's going to give this to someone. I have one of those because I've been using it for my husband as well. We've been walking through, sometimes the enemy tries to attack you. How do you, how many of you know, just because you're saved, you're born again, you know, all of that, you're the righteousness of God. You think what, the enemy's not going to attack you? He's just going to see, let's see how saved she is, how born again she really is. Let's really see how strong in the word she is. And you, how do we fight? We fight with the word of God. Everything that I gave away just a few minutes ago, I want you to know that you can go to our bookstore. We have a bookstore right here. It is new, and we have so many things in there. There are some things in there that I can't give everything away, but I want you to go in there and just browse around. You'll be surprised what you can find as gifts and stuff like that. Some of it we don't have online yet, but everything I gave away, for the most part, you can get online. Tracy's going to give you her, her website. She's going to give you her email address. You can contact her for the flip book if you're not here. But if you're going to go online and get some stuff, go to karisbiblecollege.org or awmi.net and bless somebody with the word of God. So what time is it? That's right, because we love, we love to share testimonies. So what I have is a testimony that was sent to us. It was sent by Judy, and she said the first time that she heard Andrew teach, he was teaching in Stephenville, Texas, and this was back in 1995, and she said she heard him teaching about spirit, soul, and body, and she said really her life was transformed, and she said that... Um, he was doing an illustration of it. He also in the book, so we have this illustration of spirit, soul, and body and how that all looks together. So she said that Andrew actually personally prayed for her husband. And when he prayed for him, because I guess her husband, he had a cigarette issue. That's an issue you could be healed from as well, smoking cigarettes. And so Andrew prayed for him and Andrew told him, you were already delivered from cigarettes already 2,000 years ago. So you just healed already. So stop smoking. And he just spoke a word over him. He did. He spoke. But you know what the thing is? The gentleman received it. 40 years of smoking cigarettes, 40 years healed. Healed, no more, no more smoking cigarettes because all that can just lead to something else. 40 years. Phyllis, she writes us from Canada and she said that when she was writing, she said that she's, she was to, she's totally blind. She said she was doing the, uh, sending the email through a speech and talk, speak to talk communicator. 
So she said she started listening to Andrew. She was just flipping the station. How many people, how many of us, that's how we saw Andrew? Just flipping the channel. Who, who is this guy just sitting there? Anyway, so that's what she was doing. So Phyllis was doing the same thing. She was flipping through the channels, but she began to listen. And as she began to listen, it has nothing to do with Andrew. It's the truth of the word of what Andrew was saying. And she said, she was like, wait a minute. Wow, let me listen to this guy because he is really making sense. So she said she began to listen and she kept listening to him. And she said that as he was listening during the program, he was talking about Karis Bible College. And so she was like, okay, Karis Bible College. So she kept listening and kept listening and kept listening, just watching other things. Every time Andrew was talking about Karis Bible College, she said, Lord, I guess you're putting on my heart that I should come to Karis Bible College. There is no restriction just because you may not have your sight at the time, just because you may be coming here and you may be in a wheelchair or something like that. Sometimes the enemy tries to tell you, well, who are you that you should be going to Bible College to learn about the word of God? That is definitely the enemy because that's not God saying don't come. It's not God. So she enrolled. She is attending online. Praise God. She's attending online. She says since that time, she got rebaptized in water. Since that time, she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Since that time, she's speaking in tongues. And she was like, oh my gosh. She said she's never been the same since that day. Thank you so much, Andrew. That's a, because you know what? Her, she might not have her sight at that moment, but she said that this is one thing. She said, I can't believe I've been praising God for the transformation I am seeing. I am seeing. She's seeing with her spiritual eye. She's seeing. So we are blessing God and we're standing with her that the vision she's going to begin to see, not just men as trees, but she's going to be able to see colors and different people. She's going to begin to see. We're standing with you, Phyllis, on that. My last testimony is from Summer. And Summer is writing us from Brooklyn. She just wrote us this week. And she said that she has had many uh, premature, in, premature ended pro pregnancies. So she said that um, that kept happening. So she got pregnant again. And when she got pregnant, she went in for a checkup. And when she went in for the checkup, the doctors were already telling her that she was going to lose the baby. And so she said that... Um, she proceeded to, they proceeded to tell her that, and they told her it's a slim chance that the baby isn't, is even going to make it. Um, and again, statistics just telling her, you know, this is what happened to you. You can't, you can't stand on what the statistics say or what the doctors, because that they're telling you what they know to tell you. But we know a greater doctor. We know the great physician is who we know, right? So as they kept telling her that and everything, she began to just stand on the word. And she said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to stand on the word. And she said that when her daughter was born, so she was born. They said she wasn't going to be born. She was born. She was born one pound, 13 ounces. Um, she was pretty pre premature. But you know what? For the next six months, two weeks, every day, she just kept reading the scriptures. She stood on Psalms 118, 17, Psalms 127, 3. Again, she got transformed by the word of God and kept speaking that, standing on those, on the words. Also, watching testimonies, watching testimonies of other people. And she said that just fed her faith. And then she said she, said, uh, she wanted to share that at this point, everything was gone. She is completely healed for now. She's six years old, okay? She's six. She's six, but they said she wasn't even gonna, she wasn't even gonna be born. She was gonna be gone. So just think about it. If she would have believed what the enemy said to her, and if she would have just taken that because of based on past things and what has happened, if she would have just believed that and said, you know what, well, let's just abort this baby because they said it's gonna leave anyway. It's not gonna live, but God, but God. And he said, and she's six. She is six. Well, I want you all to know when you come up here this afternoon and you get prayer and you have a testimony and something happens in your body, we will have testimony cards up here. We want you to read. We want you to write down, write down what God has done for you so we can share. And we do pass them along. When Tracy gives a word today, we have people that after she spoke the last time, they were writing in the testimonies. They, they like to hear stuff like that. We share them with Andrew and we share them with our team. So 
please write down the testimonies that take place today because I am expecting, I don't know about you, but I am expecting God to do what God does. He heals. It is his will that we are to be healthy and whole. Also, online family, do not hesitate. If you're watching here and something was said or a word was spoken and you receive your healing, please email us at healingschool at awmi.net. We can't wait to hear. Okay, and at this time, Julia is going to come and give you an opportunity to give. Thanks, Tracy. Wow. Yeah, we're going to give you the opportunity to sow into the kingdom now. So this is going to be so exciting for you. I'm going to ask the ushers if they would pass out the envelopes for me. And so the envelopes are for cash or for checks. If you have a check, please make that payable to... Caris Bible College or CBC. There's also provision to put your credit card details, but please seal the envelope so that those are protected for us. And for our online family, you can visit us at carisbiblecollege.org and you can donate online. So if you scroll to the bottom, there is a donate button. If you click that, it will take you through to a give page. You want to click donate to CBC. And then it will take you through to our AWM store. And so you want to click um, direct it to the student mission fund, please. Um, you can also be a partner monthly, which would be fabulous. So please do consider that for us. Now, my granddad, he used to have an allotment. And an allotment in England was a piece of land or various pieces of land in the community where they used to grow fruit and vegetables. And when we were little, my brother and I, we used to get our bikes and we used to cycle down to the allotment to see Grandad. And we loved it there. We had, he had a little potting shed and deck chairs and some treats for us. And we used to spend the sunny afternoons helping Grandad plant his crops and eat his produce. How many know, fresh from the ground, that's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Grandad, he used to give us these tiny little seeds to put in the palm of our hands, and he used to show us whereabouts to put them. He said, Julia, this bit of ground is good. Put it right there. Put it right there for me. And I used to look at this little seed and go, but Grandad, it's so small. There's nothing pretty about this seed. You know, as girls, we like pretty things, don't we? <laughs> Are you sure it's going to turn into something beautiful? My granddad used to pat me on the back and go, Julia, trust me, it will produce something delicious. You just wait. So sometimes we have this conversation with God, don't we, when, we, when it's time to give into an offering. We say, I've only got this small amount. Will it amount to much, God? Well, yes, it will. In the releasing of that seed, no matter how big or small, it sows the kingdom. And in Luke 13, 20, it says, Then he said, What is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It's like a mustard seed, which a man took and put into his garden. And it grew and became a large tree. And the birds of the air nested in its branches. And so the truth is, when you plant that seed, it will grow. And my favorite part of this verse is, and the birds of the air nested in its branches because they found refuge, they found safety, and they found comfort in that mustard tree. So likewise, when you take your seed, that dollar bill, and you plant it into the garden, which is this ministry, the proclamation of the gospel will grow just like that mustard tree. It will grow large. And others will come to find salvation healing, refuge, and safety. And they can nestle in the arms of Jesus, just like those birds in the branches of that tree. And so please think when you um, are giving today that the gospel you plant is going to be heard right around the world. So please, if we can receive the offering. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to sow, big or small, into the kingdom. We thank you that it is going to go forth so that people all around the world, people that never heard of Jesus, are going to know of the goodness of you. Thank you for coming to set us free and to give us eternal life with Jesus. 
everlasting life, knowing you, God, in Jesus' name. So it's my privilege now to introduce our guest speaker. She is amazing. I had the privilege of talking to her in the rest, in the break room um, the other day, and she was brought such joy. She was such a good giggle. So she is going to be a blessing. And so please welcome Tracy Bartlett. I'm so excited. I can hardly stand it. <laughs> like Tracy was saying, the Lord gave me this word for today months ago. And so it ponders, I, I ponder it, because it's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. However, what I want to start with first, um, so that you know the message today, it's going to be on the power of trust. And that in itself just rocked me. The power of trust. That's the message today. But I wanted to get, uh, the Lord had, you know, I, as Tracy was sharing, um, for all you first-timers, it is so wonderful to see you. Welcome. I've only um, been able to share or have shared a few times, and so you haven't heard what brought this about. Um, again, I'm Tracy Bartlett. My husband uh, was Stephen Bartlett. He taught here for three years. He passed away uh, the end of August last year from pneumonia. And the, and he, he had been battling cancer for six and a half years. Strongest man I know. Fought the good fight of faith. It was his spirit and his soul were strong. So he took his last breath. His body had a rough time. But his spirit and soul were strong. And I'm honored to, to be his wife. And I'm honored to um, been able to share. Uh, I was, you'll see in a minute... Um, I've known Stephen, or known Stephen since 1983, so it dates me. <laughs> I'm 64. I'm 64 years old with six children, seven grandchildren, and one on the way. Amen. <laughs> so, when Stephen was told first he had cancer round one, he went through two rounds, I, I knew it took, would take a word from God. He needed a word from God in order to make it. I knew that. And so I went before the Lord, and I asked him, Lord, give me a word. Can you give me a word for my husband? And the word he gave me was activate. Activate. So I went downstairs. I'll never forget it. He was sitting. He had a recliner. He's sitting in his recliner. And I go, baby, I got a word from the Lord for you. And he looks at me, up at me, and uh, he said, what is it? And I said, it's activate. And he goes, activate? <laughs> Seriously, Tracy? And I really said this, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> God gave me this word for you. And I could see, you know, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> You know, we need to, you know, and then I went back to the Lord and I said, Lord, can you give me something, please, to help my husband activate his faith? And during his journey, I, we pastored for over 20, I mean, in the ministry over 28, pastored 18 inner city Chicago. So uh, I knew that uh, Stephen was going to need, uh, well, we had scriptures coming in from all over. We were praying for Steve today. Here's a scripture. So I journaled. So when I asked the Lord to, to help me give him something to activate his faith, he showed me this. All those scriptures, these aren't ones just I got. These are God-given. These are God-given scriptures for Stephen when he was battling cancer for him to activate. So I put it together. They weren't as nice as these. <laughs> Homemade. <laughs> made my little binder. <laughs> anyway, um, I, when I gave it to him, it took him a while. He would take it, and I caught him one morning, and he was just kind of flipping through it, and I went, no, 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 no. That is not how you use this. This is meant, it's a tool. It's a tool to use to decree the Word of God over your body, over your loved one's bodies. 
Look, we saw many miracles in our church because we stood together on Sunday mornings. It didn't matter where the person was on planet Earth. We all stood up, right, Joshua? We held our hand, held hands and agreed for this person to be healed. We had a 100% result in the power of agreement. So I know the power of the word. I know the power of the spoken word. And this was given to my husband as a tool. So the scripture I have, uh, this is the English version. We have a new book. I don't know if they have the website to put it up where you can, see, where you can get these. The, the English one is um, the, um, Pike's Peak. I wanted to do Pike's Peak or a mountain because you speak to your mountain, right? So I changed my cover. It's a mountain. <laughs> So you can speak to the mountains in your life, in your family's life, and watch them be moved. Amen? Then I'm really excited. Is Jimmy here from Mexico? Is Jimmy here from Mexico? Okay, we, were, we had a, a man that had called in that he was going to drive up here. So I brought him at one in Spanish. You come all the way from Mexico, you get a free book. <laughs> and the picture on that one is from, um, this is my old cover, but my new one is a friend of mine who's a missionary in Mexico, took the picture in the mountains of Mexico. So you speak to your mountain. And then I am so excited about this one, because this is French. You know, you, there's a lot of French-speaking countries. And I'm really excited about this one because you can even go to Africa and they speak French. Who knew? <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> so the scripture I had pulled on my very last page is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. I wanted it to be last because I don't want you ever, us ever to forget. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same things he did when he was on planet Earth, he does today. Amen? So I'm really, I'm excited about what God is doing. Today I have twofold purpose. I thought I've been thinking about this for months. I want to help you build. Those who already have trust, say, oh, I trust God. Power trust, I trust God. Well, I want to help you build what you already have. I was thinking of an illustration with this. I remember in college, I was in argument and persuasion class. I took communications for a major. And I was in this class, and he wanted us to bring an object lesson or an illustration of words. Ha! So what I did, I was young then, or younger, you'll see in a minute, but I was younger, and I went and brought some of my kids' building blocks. <laughs> so I laid them up on the table when I gave my presentation, and I showed how you can build with your words, and then when you speak negative, you knock it down. Okay? My professor thought it was a little, he told me it was trite. I thought it was real good. <laughs> Spoke my language. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I want to build today. I have a lot of scripture, and I want to use this scripture to help build those you already have trust, and those that have been waiting for a while for your healing. I mean, we're in the context today is healing school. We have loved ones who might have stage four cancer. My husband had stage four cancer. I understand what that is. I understand the fight. I understand the victory. So, today I want to help build those that already have trust in God and for those that have lost it for whatever reason. You know, you could have a child die, you could have been in a divorce. You could have, you know, diabetes or heart disease or lost your job and don't know what you're going to do. You can trust God. I wrote down a different, it's, it's an explanation, the key difference between hope and trust. Because I remember thinking back, you know, I'd like to do a message on the power of hope. 
Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence and not things not seen. So I thought hope has to have substance. And that's why I have this little flip book, because those scriptures are your substance. The word of God is your substance, right? It's your weapons. It's what's in your pocket or in your archery or what, however you use their, your weapons to use is the word of God. So the key difference between hope and trust is trust is their base. Trust is based on reliability, confidence, or belief in someone else, whereas hope is not based on such qualities. Hope is merely a desire and expectation for a particular thing to happen. Can you see the difference? Trust is based on reliability. Who can you rely on? Absolutely, Jesus. Trust is based on confidence. Who are you confident in? Jesus. We're not normal. I'm not. <laughs> we are filled with the power of God. We have the power of trust within us because he is. Amen? It's exciting. I'm excited. The power of trust. I have trust, reliability, belief in someone else. I'm, my confidence is in him, no matter what I see. I, re, I have up on our, on our, in, our yard, in our house, I've, I've, we've moved a couple times, and I buy new ones and put them up. But I walk by faith, not by sight. Why? Because I trust the one who made me, and I have a relationship. The other thing I put on here is trust in God is built by knowing God, right? If you're having trouble today, most likely are wrestling with the situation you're in. It could possibly be that just you need to lean a little bit more into knowing him. Josh and Emmy come up. I asked my kids today, <laughs> to do an illustration. I want to have a little fun for the next maybe five, ten minutes, okay? I mean, I can always just go through and lecture and all that, but I like to have fun. So, um, you know what to do. <laughs> we did what we practiced yesterday in the office. Okay, so I wanted to illustrate... <laughs> I want to, I want to do an illustration of how trust, if, if trust or how trust is built. And if you can, I don't know who's cueing things, put that picture up. I, I had sent a picture. Ha! I told you we'd have fun today. Who are those two? <laughs> well, that's my husband and I. In 1985. And the one next to us is Miguel. Now, first I'll give the good the testimony of Miguel. Miguel was a bullfighter in Ronda, Spain. It was our first mission trip we ever took, newlyweds. We got married in December, and then, <laughs> you're not supposed to listen to me, you're supposed to do it. Okay, so, <laughs> that's why you have rehearsals. No, just kidding. Okay, did you see that? Did you all see how she just fell back? Okay, you too. Aren't they awesome? Yes. That, <laughs> that's Stephen and my youngest son, Joshua, and his wife, Emily. They're newlyweds. Joshua is our youngest son. I have four sons, two girls. So they did awesome. Congratulations. She can trust me. Yeah. <laughs> that's the illustration. I love you, I love you too. If, if the truth be known, I was going to do it. But then I thought, I don't know if he'd catch me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he'd be listening to me or he'd be distracted by his beautiful wife. <laughs> so I thought, mm, no, we'll let him do it with Emily. I know he won't drop her. So anyway, picture back up because I'm going to use it for a little bit, please. Um. Miguel was a, a bullfighter in Ronda, Spain, and when we went back then, they didn't have um, roads to get up into the mountains. We had to take a train. 
And Miguel had injured his ankle. So I don't remember if it was in a bullfight. I don't remember if it was just through time, but he couldn't walk. And I met Miguel. Well, anyway, so Miguel got healed. Stephen prayed for him. He got healed. And he became a living just um, testimony of walking around town. See, everybody knew he couldn't walk. Now, all of a sudden, Miguel's walking. And it was just, you know, glorifying God. And he was able to, to show, um, we were able to see Jesus heals today because of Miguel. Okay, now I'm going to use Miguel for another instance. Because I'm going to give you one of my life lessons. You get to enter the world of Tracy Bartlett for a few minutes. And bear with me, because it has a really powerful end to this life lesson. So when we went to Spain... <laughs> It was Stephen, myself, and my two, I had two children from a pe previous marriage. And Stephen dropped me off in the taxi with Miguel. I took Spanish, that's where I met my husband. So I took Spanish, and um, the minute I got into that taxi, I forgot it all. <laughs> this is the truth. I froze for a month. I couldn't even, I didn't even know Nino Nina. So I, fr I no, okay, so you have to, this is the point. My husband put me in a taxi alone with my two kids and let him drive me off. That's the first thing. Second experience. <laughs> now you can take it down. So now you have a picture of Miguel, know who I was in the taxi with. <laughs> anyway, you can, yeah, you, know, you can take it down. So then the next thing. We were moving to Chicago, and Stephen had gone up for the interview. He became an associate or a pastor on staff, pastor of evangelism and missions. We're moving to Chicago, so in my mind, we're moving to Chicago. Skyscrapers, the whole deal. We pull in, I, at that, that time I had... Uh, it was Christopher Summer and Samuel. And we drive in with this big truck in the middle of the night into a cornfield. And I'm like, where are we? And he says, we're here. I go, what do you mean we're here? <laughs> this is it. I said, you told me you were, we were moving to Chicago. He said, well, we are. I said, this these are cornfields. I imagine it's these skyscrapers. Okay, now this all builds. Okay, because we're talking about trust, right? Trust is relationship. Trust is built on knowing somebody, knowing the Lord. At this point, I'm learning to know my husband. This is a right smack in our early years. Next one. You're going to love this one. So we moved to this is where we moved to Chicago. And um, he rented a house sight unseen. Now, who does that? <laughs> sight unseen. So he pulls me. He pulls us up, and, and he said, Tracy, I mean, they, they alleged there's only one house. Now, come on, we live in the Chicago land area. And he tells me there's only one house that'll let you have a dog. Now, do you believe that? <laughs> well, he did. So he signs a year lease for this house. Okay, outside of the house, not so bad. Inside of the house, I went into shock. Every single room, okay, that would have been late 1980s, like 89, something like that. So the house was back in the 60s. Every single room was different. I felt, I went into culture shock. I felt I had gone around the world in my own house. <laughs> I am not kidding. I'm, okay, now that's three. So this is the building of my relationship with my husband. He takes me on these adventures. Yeehaw. Okay. So, the next one is we moved, so you understand, in Chicago, when we first got there, we moved five times in four months. <laughs> I 
I tell you what, I'm an expert packer because of it. <laughs> and I purge real well. Anyway, so this particular day, we were in, I think, house four. I remember just, he had said, I'm gonna, we're going to go do this. And I just, that was it for me. It was like the cherry on top of the whatever. That was it. And I, I remember going into the bathroom. Now, this is the part that's really important. I remember going into the bathroom, really upset, and saying, Lord, oh my gosh, what is he going to have us do? And the Lord said to me, Tracy, do you trust Stephen? See, we're talking about the power of trust today. Tracy, do you trust Stephen? No. <laughs> Not at all. Next thing said to me by the Lord, do you trust me? <laughs> Absolutely, with every breath. Next one is life changing. You get to learn my life lesson. I'm in him. Well, that'll wreck your day. <laughs> especially when you're expecting the Lord to go in and make him fix things. But that's what I want you to understand today. See what Tracy was saying before, Christ is in us. Christ is in the young people. And what I needed to recognize, this is a huge life lesson. And if you can get this today, it's huge. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. Now, I've been around the charismatic circles for quite a while. Remember, I met him in 85 or 83, but I've been born again 41 years. And I've listened to people when I share my heart or share the word. I realize it's not me. I didn't get this from me today. This is Christ in me. But them not receive it because they're looking at my face. Look, and I was, I was looking at my husband's behavior. He's dragging me across the country to who knows where. And, and he's just fine with it. It's astounding to me. Anyway, but I want you to understand that. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have to recognize God in each other. Recognize. God in his body. Christ is there. Christ is in you. You'll know. How do you know? Who can tell me? Because I like interaction. How do you know someone's in God? Fruit of the Spirit is one, yes. The fruit. Fruit of righteousness. Are they growing in God? Look, we have plenty that play church. There's plenty that have Christianese down pat. Even up to those that do speaking in major ministries. I've, so, I've been in the ministry over almost 28 years full time. I've seen it. How do you know? By the fruit, Jesus said. How do you know? By our love for one another. Not just want, 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 want. Right? Actions speak louder than words. You'll know them by their fruit. Amen? So that was my life lesson that I want to share with you today. I have trust is developed with spending time with God and others. And I want to say this about Andrew Womack. I, I, my husband and I have known Andrew probably since 1989. And I want to say this about Andrew. It's that I trust him. It's not just because he has great teachings and because he has all this. I trust Andrew because 100% of the time he keeps his word. That's huge. You know, I'm looking for those that keep their word. 
because th- I know then I can fellowship with them. We're going to sharpen each other like a, a double-edged sword. We're going to sharpen each other because they keep their word, because God does. Andrew keeps his word. I trust Andrew because I know, I know this, is he's filled with the Spirit. That's huge. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Some watering churches that aren't spirit-filled, leave. I am going to be bold about it. You need to be in a spirit-filled church where the Spirit of God can sharpen you. And you can grow in God. I've had plenty. I have a good friends that stayed back or actually left a spirit-filled church to go to an um, evangelical church. They were called to Africa, never went. They got in the wrong environment. It matters. Your health matters. Where you attend church matters. Who you hang around matters. Amen? Trust. The power of trust. How is it develop, developed? It's built. It's, de- it's built on knowing God, right? Now, do you just know him or do you continue to grow in him? So it's not enough to just say that's like, you know, I was going to have my little blocks up here. <laughs> it's like if you have one little block here and the one a scripture I already thought of my little block or which one I would have is Proverbs 3, 5 and to 6. Who knows it? Come on, let's hear you. Come on, everybody watching. <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. No, I really mean it. I almost brought my plaque. You know, I told you I was going to have fun today. You're part of me. You're the body of Christ. We're family. So you get to see how... How I roll. <laughs> but I have a little plaque that I've had for 41 years. That's the first scripture I learned when I got saved, was Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths, or he will make your path straight. Depends on what translation you're in. All your heart, and he'll lead you in all your ways. That's everything. I don't know what you're going through today, but he does. I watch the suffering. One of the hardest times for me is when my husband was in, in, down in Houston um, undergoing uh, cancer treatment. And the hospital he went to was supposed to be, quote, unquote, the best in the world. Not. That's all I can say. However, when I walked in there, I'm spirit-filled. I'm picking up on all the attacks on people's lives. Children on Christmas, I'm telling you, one of the hardest few days of my life was going and watching children, no hair, in wheelchairs, on IVs, fighting for their life. That is demonic. It is not God. And it's a whole hospital full of them. Overwhelming. Jesus. That's all I can say. Help us clear hospitals. My husband told me one day, I saw myself in a dream laying hands on a hospital and they all walked out. I will never forget that. Because I believe it. It's not new. (laughs) It's been done before. So why not now? Now faith is, right? Now faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Great scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Trust in the strongs I put down is to take refuge in, to trust in, put at the trust. So what I'm going to do, I want you to imagine that you're building your trust for those that have trust. I'm going to give a few scriptures. And I want you to write them down. And how you do this, if you're taking notes and you think I'm going too fast, you write the numbers down first and then the chapter. 
Okay, it really helps. So the first one I'm going to do is 2 Samuel twenty two thirteen. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust him. Isn't that awesome? As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. Wait, that's trust. He's proven. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield. What's a shield? Come on, do you think it's this little teeny wimpy thing? My grandkids play with um, Captain America's shield. <laughs> Look, I have a bunch of grandkids. And they go out and they put up their little shield. It doesn't do diddly. All you have to do is come around the side and you're not. We play, um, we have those Nerf dart guns. <laughs> so they use that so they don't get blasted. Well, it doesn't do very good. Anyway, his is a shield. That's awesome. I love you, Jesus. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 511. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. Look, I understand what it's like to be in the middle of the fight. I had to listen to my husband breathe. He went through radiation treatment and he squeaked. And I knew he was under intense warfare. I know what it's like. But I also know what it's like to have trust in God. I know what it's like to not look at things seen and know the one who created us. And that has a purpose and plan. Look, my husband fulfilled his destiny. Even though it was short, he's still reaching. His messages are still going out. I just found out a couple days ago he's in the new devotional for Karis. That's awesome. From his heart, he still lives. It's amazing to me. God is so good. Psalm 37:40. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Look, you have to get a hold of the power of trust. What delivered them? Their trust in God. It's not hoping, oh, I hope so. I remember one day I heard... Um, well, you know, this whatever is going to work or whatever, and it's the, what came back to me is, well, I hope so. Well, that isn't impressive at all. <laughs> Trust is powerful. Trust is an anchor. Trust will get you through the storm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What's that mean? I'm not looking at anything. Lean not on your understanding. I don't know why my husband had cancer. Well, yes, I do. It was an attack. I do know why he had cancer, and I do also know why he passed early. But even so, that doesn't move me. Because it's Christ, who, he who began a good work in me, he who began a good work in you, is going to complete it, right? Yes. He's going to, I prayed for my children, my grandchildren, the children to come in generations till Christ returns. Now, I will say this. I would like to be a part of those that usher him in now. I don't want to say, oh, well, maybe in a thousand years he'll come back. Why don't we just take it now? We have it all. What's stopping us? Unbelief, fear of man, selfishness. Come on, church, body of Christ. What's holding us back? We have everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything, all things, right? There's nothing stopping us. Let's go. Let's bring him back. That's why I live. That's why I breathe. Psalm 118, 8 to 9. 
It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. How many go to a man or a woman or a church or something to try to get some, they want their faith. If they just lay hands on me, I know I'll be healed. Yes, there's a time for that. Don't get me wrong. But how many want to have their faith rather than develop their own? Come on. We can do this. Christ is in us. Amen? Ha! There's nothing impossible. Nothing. I want to de- uh, share a testimony. Um, I, I didn't do it earlier, but it keeps coming back to mind, so I believe the Lord wants me to share it. Let me see if I can get my phone to turn. There's a couple um, that are Karis graduates that have started a Karis Bible study and meet in their home, and they're also on the radio. And they have gotten some of the Releasing the Spirit of Faith booklets, and they buy a bunch. And they keep them for the people that come. So he called me a couple of weeks ago and said, Tracy, um, I, have, I you know, need more. We've given them all out, and I just want you to know we've had some miracles. Huh. So I said, could you please? I'm not surprised. I want to hear them because it gives God glory. So he said... Um, I asked him, can you just write them down for me so I can share them? Because they're really powerful. This one is a lady, her name was Trudy, was present in our Bible study one night and was diagnosed with a brain tumor. We did not know this when we began teaching, but as usual, Holy Spirit instructed Melda and I to incorporate some healing scriptures in our teaching outline for this session. At the end of this study of the scriptures, we began, to, uh, we began to pray for individuals that had various needs when we met Trudy. It, w- it was revealed, the doctor report indicated a tumor in Trudy's head, and she needed to have surgery. We laid hands on her and anointed her with oil as we spoke against this tumor, right? That's what you do. You speak against it, to come out of her head in Jesus' name. As a reinforcement, we gave her releasing the Spirit of Faith healing book and told her to speak over her body with these scriptures three times a day. And you know that God has already healed her over 2,000 years ago by Jesus' finished work on the cross and the resurrection and power given to all who believe. Trudy was from another state and was just visiting relatives that normally attended our Bible study, so we believe she received her healing. About two weeks later, she heard the report after Trudy went back to get additional x-rays from surgery, and the the doctors were confused and confounded. They took some more x-rays and could not find the tumor. Now, that's awesome. (laughs) Glory to God. There's more. Now, the thing with Trudy was so awesome is the thing about, or or, or I had, I have instruct in there, take it like medicine. You know, when you go to the doctor, they give it, take three times a day. So why not? How powerful. So she did it. See, I just love it when people do the word. It's, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for the kingdom. Come on, God, help, help us. Help us. And he has. So let's use it. This is just a tool. Here's another one. Ronnie comes to our Bible studies each week. Ronnie was diagnosed with heart issues several months ago, specifically blockages and erratic heartbeat. We prayed for Ronnie and kept believing with him for healing to manifest in his body. We gave the release in the spirit of faith and told him to take it like medicine three times a day and continue to speak to his heart and arteries to be healed in Jesus' name. Ronnie recently gave his testimony after the doctor's visit where the tests reveal no more blockage. And Ronnie's heart is functioning better than ever. Ronnie glorifies God, yes, and thanks Jesus every day for his healing. Isn't that awesome? 
And here's one, the last one. The last testimony is Lady Bobby that had tremendous pain in her foot while attended our Bible study one night. Bobby was prayed over as the pain was commanded to come out of her body. As a reinforcement to our prayers, we gave her release in the spirit of faith and told her to take it like medicine three times a day. Bobby says the pain is gone from her foot and glorifies God for her healing. Look at that's Christ in us. That's action. That's where we we've, we've taken it. It's not we're just we're we're to ourselves or selfish, but we're taking what Christ has done in and get it out of us. Amen. Isn't that awesome? So I just wanted to share that. Psalm 56, 3 to 4. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I've put my trust. I will fear not. What can flesh do to me? That's really powerful. You get a hold of that one. Whenever I'm afraid. One of the first things when Stephen was diagnosed the first time would try to get on me because we were not in the same state when he was diagnosed was fear. Fear came first. And I recognize it. I, I've shared this before. I, I was tangible. It was a spirit that came and it grabbed both my ankles. Tangible. Fear. Well, because I have a relationship with the Lord and because I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, I was able to discern what just hit me. Immediately rebuked it off me and immediate it, immediately it left. Look, you have to learn to recognize. See, that's what I was sharing a little bit before. If you can recognize Christ in others, you'll receive more. You'll learn more. I'm always looking. My, my, my Holy Spirit ears are constantly, I don't know if I ever shut them down. Because I'm always looking, listening. What do you want, Lord? Since Stephen passed more than ever, I ask for wisdom every day. I need wisdom today. And he gives it to me. He's faithful. You're not alone. You're not alone. Might feel that way. But you're not. Look, <laughs> I have six children, <laughs> three of which were living with me. All of a sudden, dad's gone. There's great opportunity to me to feel alone, but I never did. Because I have Christ in me. I have Christ in me. I'm not alone. He's the author and perfecter of my faith. His children hear his voice, a stranger's they won't follow. That's you. That's me. I hear his voice. He's given me direction. I have other friends that are widows that don't have it yet. They haven't received direction or purpose. I have it. So do you. So do our children. It's wonderful to watch my children rise up and see the Holy Ghost. See, it's not me. It's the Holy Ghost in them. Recognizing it's the Holy Ghost that's moving, growing, leading. You just have to learn to know the Father and know his voice, right? How do you? One of the practical ways is to get into your word. Use it. Read it. Decree it over you. I met a man, I didn't meet a man, but I talked to a man the other day who can't read. How did you hear about us? <laughs> You know, he goes, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for the word. Ah, that's my kind of call. <laughs> I mean, I just love it. <laughs> I'm hungry. I want meat. It's time to get some, huh? It's time to get rid of the milk and go with the elementary teachings of Christ. It's time to grow up. I want to usher the king home. Amen. Who's with me? Come on. Good. <laughs> because one sends a thousand, two, ten thousand. Let's go. Amen. Power of Christ is in us. I wanted to use some examples 
Um, well, anyway, when this man said um, he couldn't read, but he was hungry for God, to build trust, you have to be hungry for the Word of God. You want to build trust? You say, I trust the Lord. Everything's good. <laughs> We're on enemy territory. Until Christ comes back or we go home, you're fighting. So how are you going to build the trust you already have? How are you going to build, you know, with the, and it's the scripture. I was going to have my little blocks here with all my little scriptures to where you see when we were done. <laughs> it was pretty substantial. It'd be hard for the enemy to come in and penetrate, wouldn't it? it? Because you build your foundation on God and on his word. It's amazing. So, to build trust, you have to be hungry. Who's ever been hungry in here? I know we live in America, where there's the Whopper. I don't even like that anymore. Sorry. I have been. I've been in my house when I had my first two kids and I was a single mom. Our cupboards were bare. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to be in want. I know what it's like to have so many children you don't know what to do. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My kids had one pair of shoes. They grew so tall. Stand up, Josh. You got to see how tall this boy is. He's the shortest of the three. He's 6'5". Six, 6'5", six, 6'7", six, 6'9". Six, <laughs> I'll say. I watched him grow. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just bought you a pair of jeans and they're short already. They were high water in a month. That is not right. <laughs> it took faith to clothe my kids and feed them. Our grocery bill was 350 a week. My gosh, look at them. They had to fill those legs. <laughs> Oh, and then, that's not enough, we had the neighbors. My house is always open. In fact, one of the youngins who lived with us, we've known, we've known him since he's four, is living with us now. <laughs> and it's like astounding. Oh, who would have known that he would come back into our life now, 30, or what is he, 26 years later. 28 years later, he's in our house. <laughs> he's still eating my food. Fun. Okay, I wanted to give you examples of those that had to trust in the Bible. Noah, pretty obvious, right? If you were told to build an ark and put in animals two by two when nobody else was doing it, would you? Let's be honest. Ha! Huh, I was like, Noah, you're amazing. He did it. Why? He knew God's voice. Right? He knew God's voice. Abraham. Abraham, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. That's out of Hebrews 11. 8. He didn't know where he was going. Just went. How many of you? Now, there's many students that do that. They don't know how they're going to get here. They don't know how they're going to live here. They don't know how they're going to pay for their tuition. I have a to totally awesome tuition story for when I went to Oral Roberts, but that's not now. They have to trust God that God's going to come through and provide. I remember when Lauren, uh, she's our, my youngest daughter of the six. She's the, the caboose. And uh -huh, Lauren came to school with her daddy. And... Um, she had to have so much money by such and such a date. She was absolutely freaked out. She goes, Mom, it's due tomorrow. What am I going to do? I said, you're going to believe God. I don't know how he's going to do it. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I believe God. And I know he's faithful. And I'll know, I know he's going to do it for you. Guess what? She had it the next day. If you're wanting to come to Karis, come on. 
God is faithful. He's a miracle working God. Nothing is impossible with him. Come on to school. It's a phenomenal place and environment of faith. Phenomenal. In the, in the barn they have over the um, platform, it says, in God we trust. Right? The power of trust. Amen. In God we trust. So come on. Come to school. Come with your family. It's an awesome place of faith. Joshua. I have one of those. <laughs> Joshua was told to go march around a city wall. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was in the group who just got, to, you know, ran around not that long ago in the wilderness, <coughs> I don't know if I would have been very happy about marching around and thinking I'm going to take what's inside. But he did it. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. And the walls came down, didn't they? Why? Because he obeyed. He trusted the word of the Lord, and he obeyed. And as a result, the walls came down. Look at whatever wall you have up, whatever wall you're facing. <laughs> Praise God. And I literally mean that, because they blew trumpets. If you have a shofar, blow it. I have one. We used to blow it in our church. It was great. And we saw miracles because we were establishing ground. That's awesome. Praise God. Praise God in the mist. Praise God, whatever you're going through. Change your environment. You do it through praise. You do it through thanksgiving. You enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving in his courts with? Not me. I'm, oh, I have to do this again today. Oh. Look, I understand pain because I watched my husband in it. I watched him suffer. I understand pain. I get it. So I'm not putting anybody down. If you're feeling pain right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, I just ask that you would manifest your glory in their body through the power of the Holy Ghost and touch them now. Deliver them. Pain go in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. Rise up and walk. I know there's those hearing that. That's you. Rise up and walk. Do something you haven't done before. Is it Alfredo? He's here today. We have a, he, we have a, a man here today who, who God's healed who that was something for him to do, right, Alfredo, to get up and walk? It's astounding. Our God is alive today. You saw Miguel, who couldn't walk, living testimony to the whole town in the middle of nowhere in the mountains of Spain. God heals now. It's awesome. Okay. I was going to do something, if you want to put that screen up that has that acrostic on it. I also had Job on here, and I also had the centurion, but I only have 15 minutes. The centurion came to Jesus, and what? Jesus said he wanted, you know, Jesus was going to go with him. How about that? I'm going to have Jesus come to my house. And you say no? <laughs> wow. All you have to do is say the word, I'm a man under authority. Yes. I know. See, that man, that centurion, knew authority. He knew all he needed was a word from God. Remember, I told you my husband just needed a word from God. I knew that's all he needed. And he was healed. He was healed. We got to share some wonderful years with him when he wasn't under attack. It was great. I want to do the cross. Okay, so you see trust this way? Do, 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 do. That's what an acrostic is. <laughs> I had somebody, 
I had to highlight it, you know. I had someone tell me I don't like those. Anytime minister, someone ministers with a acrostic, I don't like it because I don't get it. So I thought, okay, well, I don't want that to happen. So I'll make one up. So we're going to go through trust. The power of trust is what we're talking about. The power of trust, when you trust, you're going to trust and you know that God's word is truth, right? When you're in trust, you know God's word's true. I have Ephesians 1.13. In, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Look, at you're sealed. You've believed in Christ, you're sealed. Your salvation isn't going anywhere. Don't let some devil lie to you or a lie come to your head because that's what it is, is lies. That's the only way the enemy works. Diablo means throw into, so he, all he can do is throw thoughts into your head. Get your helmet on. Numbers 23, 19 to 20. God is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man, that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? We're talking about God here. Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Look at your blessed. Say it. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. It's a command. It's given to us. He's not a man that he should lie. So if you're feeling poor, man, I've been there before. I understand what it's like to be in want. I wish I could give you a different testimony, but that wouldn't be mine. In the midst of the poverty or lack, praise him. In the midst of your pain, praise him. In the midst of the, the, you know, whatever's happening in your job, lack of job, praise him. Thank you, Jesus. We're blessed. I'm a blessed woman. I may have lost my husband, but I am blessed. My husband gave me phenomenal gifts in my children. He gave me them. God gave me my husband. I'm a blessed woman. He has things written and things he's written to us. And we're just blessed. Not time. There's no time to, to, to you know, I don't know. There's a time for grieving. I probably cry every day. <laughs> To be honest, I'm just being honest. I have a memory. I had, someone, oh, I had someone call me, oh, Tracy, you don't have to ever grieve. Isn't that wonderful? Maybe you. I don't know what kind of relationship you had. I love my husband. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, I love my husband. And I did everything I knew. I prayed. I was a warrior for my husband. But I know this one thing, that he who began a good work is faithful. I know this, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I know that. Oh, I gave this. Okay, so we did T for truth. R is rest. When you're trusting or the power of trust, you're going to rest because you know he who said what he was going to do is going to do it. So I put down this, um, the story in Mark 4, 35 to 40, when the winds and the waves obey Jesus. Look at Jesus in here. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Most of you know this story. Jesus was asleep in the boat on a pillow, is what my verse said. On a pillow. Okay, he's re is he resting? He's asleep. That's astounding to me. Man, I would have gotten woken up just being noshing for the boat going like this. Would have woke me up. But he's sound asleep. And he's awoken 
in the storm. And he says, peace, be still. Are you in a storm of any kind? Peace, peace, be still. Peace, be still. Speak it. That's right. Speak it. Peace, be still. It's going to calm. I, I, watched, I have watched, I have witnessed weather stop. I've witnessed it. Jesus is the same yesterday and forever, today and forever. Why not? I remember a hurricane. I was living in Miami and a hurricane was coming straight head on. I'd never been in one. But I was in a phenomenal Bible study. <laughs> oh, they're little prayer warriors. They're phenomenal. We're going to rebuke this thing. I'm in. I mean, I was new in the Lord. We're going to rebuke it. Great, I'm in. We rebuked the thing. Guess what it did? It stayed. It stayed off the coast. It didn't move. That's God's hand. That's awesome. And it just went up and out. Didn't affect anybody. Prayer works. Glory to God. Prayer works today. You can speak to the weather like Jesus did. We can do it. It's awesome. I have a friend. He was just here. He's from India. And remember when they had that tsunami come in and just wipe out? Well, that's the area he and his family live in. They have eight children, eight orphans. And he stood on the, the coast or right on the shoreline, and he spoke to the tsunami, and it split. That's today. That's now. That, come on, that's the faith we have in us. Where you speak and it moves. Glory to God. Lord, you're awesome. And we love you. There's none like you. I put down Psalm 23. And most of us know, under, um, well, that was under truth. Am I on the wrong page? Hold on a minute. Three is under, or understand. So where do you? Resting. Jesus rested, spoke to the storm. He was sleeping in it. That's rest when you're in the middle of a storm. Understand. Understand Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why he came. One of the reasons. 1 Corinthians 14, 15, New King James Version. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. And I have here a highlight on my notes. The Holy Ghost. Understand that you have the Spirit of the living God in you. And he came to destroy the works of the devil. So let's. Isn't that awesome? You should be excited. I have the living God in me. I've cast out devils. I've watched them flee. It's wonderful to see God come and deliver a person to when they come back to their right mind, where they can come and live because Jesus came that we'd have a life and have it more abundantly. It's wonderful. Why do we, why do we hold back? That's fear. Fear of man. I spoke with someone not that long ago and said, they were telling me where they were going to go and they were going to go minister. And I said, you need to recognize that the fear of man is coming at you, and you need to cast it out and stand in the confidence of the Holy Ghost in you. Amen? It's recognition. If you don't know God, you won't recognize him. The more you do spend time with him and in his word, hear his voice, then you will recognize him. Life lesson. <laughs> Remember my life lesson. God is in us, and we must recognize him, and you'll know by the fruit. Amen? Colossians 1.27. 
To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. This is one of my favorite scriptures, and I've said it a few times. Christ in you, the hope of glory. S on the, on the thing is um, strength. Put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. Finally, my brother, bring, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because you're not fighting against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand, stand. I remember one time, I may have shared this, I was in a really intense battle. I was young in the Lord, just learning about armor. I didn't even know much. I was just in, they used to call it rock class then, when you're learning the basics. That's where I was. I'll never forget, I went into church and I sat down. This guy, two seats down, he goes, man. And I could tell he could see in the spirit. It's just a, a veil came off. I could feel it. Young in the Lord, but I could feel that. And he said, man, your armor's all beat up. Your helmet's this way. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're all dented. I said, well, yeah, I, I know that. You know, I'm in the battle. It's intense here. You know, I don't need, what I need is the, to know my armor. Don't ever take it off. I've learned that in warfare. There's no time to put it down. We're in warfare. You never know. He comes when you, when you least expect it. He comes when your guard's down. If your armor's down, see, he sees in the spirit. He sees your armor down. If you are built up in faith, you have your helmet of salvation, right? What's that covering? It's going to cover your head, your thoughts. He throws, hurls thoughts in your mind, lies into your mind. Helmet of salvation is on my head, not getting it. The enemy can't get there if I'm in the word, if I know who I am in Christ, right? I have my breastplate on. You don't just pick and choose your armor. Oh, today I feel more like sandals. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> He's going to hit you from behind. Put on the whole armor. It's a command. Put it on. Be strong. We're talking about the power of trust. When your armor's on, what do you feel? Strong, confident, right? Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why? Because you're wearing your armor. Have you been whooped on? I've had days. A few years ago, I had more than I wanted. And I remember the Lord said, I said, Lord, what on earth is going on? I don't normally react like this or respond like this. And he <laughs> You ask, he'll answer. He said, your shield of faith is down. I knew exactly what that meant. I knew exactly what I needed to do. How's your shield? Build. We're talking about the power of trust. We're talking about building the trust we already have. We're talking about in that is developing, building on, putting on that, putting up that shield of faith. Why? Because you're intimate with God. You're spending time in worship and prayer. You're reading the word. You're growing. You're in the environment where faith grows. Look, if you have a plant, because Julie was talking about her um, what is granddad's or um, little you know, garden. Look, if you don't water the garden, it's going to die. I came in the office the other day. I have one of those, they call them um, uh, prayer plant type of things. Or anyway, when it droops when you don't water it. <laughs> Thank God it tells you. It would be dead already. <laughs> but there's no difference with the word. You have to water. You plant. You water. You reap. Get more. Plant. Water. Reap. 
plant, water, reap, harvest. You have a little grain of a mustard seed in you, and it produces this huge mustard tree. Who knew? <laughs> I tell you what, God is astounding. Okay, that's strength. Where are we at time? I'm at three or two. Sorry, guys. Last one's thankful. 2 Corinthians 1, 2, for all the promises of God are yes and amen in him to the glory of God through us. Psalm 104, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Colossians 3, 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. When you're trusting, no matter, look at when you're in the storm and you're choosing to stand because you've done all to stand, then you're going to trust God. In the midst of it, be thankful. There's power in being thankful. Because it enters, you enter in his gates with thanksgiving. Man, you're there. But if you're seeing and saying what you see, Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm speaking in the natural what I see. Well, you're not in agreement with heaven. That's why I pray in the Spirit. Because when you pray in the Spirit, you'll become heavenly minded. And if you don't pray in the Spirit, call. There's a prayer partner that can help you learn or become filled with the Spirit because there's power in being filled with the Spirit. I couldn't live without the Holy Ghost. He's my best friend. He's my guide. He's been my comfort. He's yours too. Amen? Be thankful. And then um, First Thessalonians, then we're going to close. First Thessalonians 5.18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Amen? Father, thank you for today and the opportunity. Father God, I ask you to, you, you breathe on every single one here and every single one watching. Fill them with your spirit in a new way. Let them know you and make you known. For your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Glory to God. Were you blessed? Did you get a word? Did you get a nugget today? Did she give you instruction? Did she feed you today? God is good. Trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. At this time, we're going to have our prayer ministers to come forward. And I want you to Trust in the Lord. Just think about what's something that, okay, God, I don't know that I was fully trusting you in this area. Trust a big God. He's a big God. There's nothing too hard for him, nothing he cannot do. Agree with his word. Just stand to your feet at this time. If you are ready to come and receive from these prayer ministers agreeing with you, they are ready. No hesitation. You can come forward right now and just touch and agree with them to trust in the Lord with all your heart. If we could have some music, please. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you for who you are. You are Alpha, you are Omega. We thank you that we can trust in you, O oh God. You are not a man that you should lie. And we thank you. You are a faithful God. Have you not said it? Will you not do it? Thank you that we can trust in you, God. There's no need to be ashamed for anything that you want agreement with. 
They are here right now to pray with you, agree with you, to trust in God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. Those who are watching online, I encourage you to contact our communication services department at 719-635-1111. There is someone waiting there just to agree with you so that you can trust, so we can build up your trust. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We just touch and agree right now. We think, we just pray and over every sickness, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that someone right now is being attacked, Lord God, in their back right now, Lord. And I thank you, Lord God, that it's healed right now, that they're trusting you, they're trusting in your word and what your word has said, that you sent your word and you heal them. There is no sickness, no disease that is too hard for you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I thank you, Lord God. Blood disorder is gone right now in the name of Jesus. Kidneys restored right now. Lungs, proper breathing right now in the lungs. Right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. I see someone right now. Your, your knees just begin to bend. Bend up and down. Do something you could not do before. Knees healed right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There is no distance with the Spirit of God. There's no distance in His Word. There's no distance. And we just speak it right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you that someone was encouraged by that testimony that I read about the sister from New York that actually had the baby. You just touch and agree right now. Children are God's idea. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you. But God, and I speak to that wife, that husband, that couple, I speak to them right now, God, and I thank you, Lord God, that their quiver is full. I thank you that they will carry full term. I thank you, Lord God, that they shall not be barren. Right now, I speak to the womb right now. I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for you have a purpose and a plan for that child, God, for their life, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. We trust in you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your trust. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Give you glory, God. Thank you. We thank you so much for joining us here at Healing School. We will pray for everyone this afternoon before we leave. Everyone will get prayed for. But we thank you, online family, for joining us this day. Please tune in and watch us next week. Daniel will be back. And we will be so looking forward to you because God has a word for you. Thank you for joining us. Amen.